I gotta get one of those clipper things. Clapper things, whatever you, what you call them. That thing. What's happening, boot junkies? Mike Delgadio here, back with another video on home studio setup for voiceover. That feels good. Oh man, that feels good. What's happening, boot junkies? All right, we have two microphones in the booth today, and this one is on loan from a fellow booth junkie. Randall, you are the man. Thank you so much for loaning me this magnificent microphone. I am so grateful for it. This is a bad piece of machinery. Super cool. We are putting the LCT, I'm sorry, the Lewitt LCT 550 microphone through its paces. Now, I have uh, a similarly priced, I can never say that word, similarly, similarly priced microphone, the Neumann TLM 103. We're going to put it up against it so we can do a sound comparison of the between the two, but we're going to talk about this microphone primarily, and that is the Lewitt LCT 550. This microphone's been discontinued. Hmm? So that means if you like the way this puppy sounds, you can probably get it at used for significantly less than it was retail. Now, retail this microphone, to the best of my knowledge, because it's been actually hard to find a, uh, an original asking price for it, uh, 850 I think. I think 850 I could be wrong on that. I think it was 850 We're putting it up against the Neumann TLM-103. The TLM-103 is about a grand, uh, $1,100 for a typical microphone. This one's mine. This one is on loan. Thank you, Randall. Um, <clears throat> what should we talk about? Let's talk about first some of the features of the LCT 550 and what makes it a cool microphone. What what makes it sound cool? Like when you hear about this microphone, you go, hey, that sounds cool. Now you're going to hear it and you're going to say, oh, that sounds cool. Or, hey, that sounds cool. <laughs> We're going to see. We're going to see if you like the way it sounds compared to you know, a similarly priced microphone. The Lewitt LCT 550, first, its number one claim whenever you look at all the, the, the stuff that's online about it is it is the world's quietest microphone. Now, we've had some quietest microphones in the booth before. The Rode NT1A comes to mind as being the quietest, and I think they say in its class. And that one, I think, is 4.5 dBA. Is its noise floor? That's how quiet it, it can be. Uh, a lot of other microphones that we have out there, they're like 9 and 12 and 14 dB. Now, we're talking very, very minute differences here. But when you're talking about specs, that's often what they compete on. This one is a little bit quieter. So this one, the LCT 550, claims 0 dB. Asterisk. And they put a little star next to it. What they say is that the guts of this thing, the actual electronics of it, in a idealized, perfect environment, it would be zero dBA. However, we don't live in the world that is a perfect, idealized environment. There is air around us, isn't there? And the air, no matter what, the air is always moving. That's called Brownian motion, the tendency for particles in a fluid to always be in motion. And some of those particles are going to they're going to bump ever so gently into the diaphragm, and that's going to cause some self-noise. The self-noise of this microphone is caused by the Brownian motion of molecules in the air, and that, they say, is 3 dBA. dBA. A is the, um, is a, it's called the A-weighted curve, and there's a tendency for some frequencies, uh, some frequencies compared to others to be louder, and there's like a certain curve for that. And so oftentimes you'll see the DBA rather than, um, so it's based on human perception, based on actual energy. And I think it's, you know, take, for example, a, a, a thousand hertz sound and a 500 hertz or a 50 hertz sound at the same level of energy. One's going to seem louder than the other. That's the A weighting curve. It's my understanding of it anyway. And so that's what they use, the human perception of that hearing. Anyway, so this microphone says it's zero DBA asterisk is really three DBA. Either way, it is imperceptibly quiet. There's nothing there. There's just, there's just nothing there. It's as quiet as quiet can be. You can hear a mouse fart three houses over. 
That's how they always describe condenser mics, right? You can hear a mouse fart three days, three houses over. Anyway, well, you know, I the noise floor, I don't know, the, the Neumann doesn't really crow about the noise floor. That one, I can't hear that one either. It, mm, super quiet. Okay, that's number one. The second thing that they say that's cool about the LCT-550 is all of the microphones, because of that zero, that zero dB, that noise floor, that absolute noise floor, is they say that take any two, it's a stereo matched pair. So if you're going to record something in stereo, most of the time for mic manufacturers like this one, you have to buy two that have been matched at the factory to have a similar sound profile so that if you're doing a stereo image, the left and right don't sound different due to the nature of the manufacturing of the microphone. Lewitt says, take two, they're a stereo matched pair. Pretty bold claim, pretty bold claim. Because I know this particular Neumann was part of a stereo matched pair and a previous owner blew one up. I think he damaged it irreparably. You see my um, basket is creased right there uh, because it got it got really damaged. And luckily this one was uh, fine. Only the basket got a little bit creased. But the other one got blew it up. So he uh, sold off one. So I have a case with uh, two mic spots and only one mic in it. Yeah. So stereo matched pair. Automatically a stereo matched pair. The third thing that's cool about the LCT-550 is its user interface. Now, the Neumann and many other mics, and this is nothing wrong with it. It's just the way the manufacturer elects to implement their microphone. The Neumann microphone, in this case, this particular TLM-103, it's got no buttons, no switches, no dials, no knobs, no nothing. It's just microphone. If you want to change the signal in any way, you've got to do it in a piece of hardware or software somewhere down the line after the microphone. Many microphones do come with a switch or two on them. There will be often a high pass filter, and that means some of the bass, the very lowest bass, will get taken away, and that's often to offset the proximity effect, which is the nature of uh, a microphone's tendency to get bassier as the sound source gets closer to it. So as you get closer to a microphone, it can tends to make your sound bassier. Uh, same with this mic. As you get closer to it, it will sound a bit bassier. And that's just, that's called the proximity effect. And some people, sometimes you don't want that. You're miking an instrument or something like that. You want it to sound like the instrument. So you can take away that bassiness with a high-pass filter. Some will have one filter. Some may have two. We've seen some microphones with two. Another switch that's very common on microphones is a pad. So if this microphone, if the sound source is so loud that it makes the microphone clip, you can decrease the sensitivity with a switch called a padding switch, and that will often take some volume away. We've seen them at 6, 8, 10, 20 dB. It depends on the mic manufacturer. Now, the user interface on this particular Lewitt microphone, it has both of those. So it has two different high passes. It's got an 80 hertz roll off so everything below 80 hertz it's really going to try and take take a lot of those away there's also a 160 160 hertz high pass filter so a bit more gentle roll off so it isn't quite just a a, a, a wall that cuts off the uh, the low it tapers it off a little bit more and so that's the tendency so as you get close to the microphone let's see if i can engage it here without completely blasting your ears out so right now you're listening to the microphone nice and flat if I press it once, now you hear the 80 hertz roll off. And if I press it again, you hear the 160 hertz roll off. And you can see that the nature of the bass switches. So now that's the, the full frequency. Now this is the 80 hertz roll off. And this is the 160 hertz roll off. It's really just to manage, put it back. It's to manage the proximity effect, the, the bass. You can get rid of rumble in your room if your furnace or your traffic is over there. You can get rid of some of that with that high pass filter. You also hear it called low cut, high pass. Same thing. Um, there's another switch on the other side of the microphone, and that is the padding. So this one has two padding switches. So first is at zero dB, you're getting the full range, and then you can turn the microphone down by six decibels by pressing the button on the right, and it gets six decibels quieter. You press it again, and it gets 12 decibels quieter. So it just turns it down. And that is so that you can increase the level of sound that you can pass into this microphone before it starts to clip. Now that's all well and good. Many microphones have those. I haven't seen many that have two options at both, but they have two. Now this one takes that a little bit further. If you press the 
right hand button, the actual padding. If you press and hold it, it goes into auto attenuation mode. And if you have it set at auto attenuation, once it gets loud enough to clip, it just automatically turns it down and it will keep it down at that next lowest thing. So if you're in the middle and you've got a, a vocalist and all of a sudden he hits that high note and he just belts it out, it's going to take it down a little bit so that you can save the take. Maybe something that you want. And then it on the other button, the uh, high pass filter, if you press and hold that button, and what that will do is that rather than automatically attenuating it, it will say, hey, you've been so loud, you've been so loud, all of a sudden it clipped, here's what you should turn it down to. So rather than automatically doing it, it will make a, uh, it will tell you, hey, you should probably turn it down to minus six or minus 12. So one will automatically do it and one will make a suggestion based on the history of what it, what it's heard. Uh, and then the middle button um, can turn the lights off. It's, it's lit up. Can I show it to you? It's lit up. It's lit up and uh, the, the middle button will turn some of that lighting off. Let's see, what, what does it do? Press and hold. Yeah, see, I can turn the whole thing off. And what that does is that activates a, a lock so that you can't go and mess up with the, you can't go and mess with the other buttons. So somebody can't go and start pressing buttons on there. You can lock it. Um, that's a pretty radical uh, user interface for, as far as I'm concerned. I've never seen it on, on any other microphone, especially not one that's, uh, you know, XLR powered. Just that's doing all, all with phantom power. That is pretty, that's pretty amazing. Sound wise, I don't know that I have any complaints. I don't know that I have any, uh, anything to say about that microphone. I do think it sounds different than the Neumann. I think it sounds much more neutral than the mic, uh, than the Neumann. I, I looked around trying to find a frequency response and the one chart they have that shows the, the roll off. I, that I think is just the, the roll off thing. I can't find a frequency response chart on it. I do think that this one sounds a little bit more neutral than the Neumann. Neumanns are not necessarily known for sounding neutral. I, I feel like I sound more authoritative in the 103. It's one of the reasons I really like the, uh, the Neumanns and the 103 and some of the other Neumanns that I've used. Um, I really like the authority, the authoritative sound of my voice. I feel I sound really nice and full and robust and bassy. I really like that. I do find that the Lewitt is a little bit more neutral. Maybe that's part of what makes them stereo parable. They pick any two, that it is a flatter response. I don't find that this sounds hyped. I don't find that it sounds uh, bassy. I find that it sounds pretty neutral. You'll be able to make the judge judgment call on whether or not you like the way it sounds compared to to uh, you know another one in its price point, it's really going to come down to at this price point, it's going to come down to which you think is more appropriate for you and which you think sounds better. Both of these microphones sound aces. You're not going to go wrong. You are not going to go wrong. Somebody's going to say, "Oh, you chose a Neumann. Oh, what's the matter with you? You chose a a Lewitt. What are you crazy? No, it's not the way that works." These microphones both sound good, but they're, they sound different. They have their own distinct sound signature. And it's a question of what one you like. But technically speaking, these are both A plus fantastical mics. And I've really enjoyed using them both. I like this uh, LCT 550. It was new mic to me. I, it, was, it, was new, it was new to me couple of other things that uh, are, are interesting about it. You notice that for the first time on my Neumann, I have a pop filter. This is the WinTech Pop Guard. I just discovered this from a, a, a booth junkie that sent uh, one in with his microphone and I discovered it. So I went out and bought one. I did. Um, I went out and bought one. But the reason I have it on this microphone is because the Lewitt has one built into its pop filter. This is so cool. It has one that's built in and there's little tiny magnets I think there's magnets in the uh, in the shock mount so when you put it in it just clicks into place and you've got a, sh uh, a pop filter integrated directly into the shock mount this is a really nice nice compact setup does not get in your way the WinTech here this one is rubber banded onto the onto the Neumann I'm sorry I'm probably making it rumble uh, but it makes for a reasonably small 
reasonably small package. But this one, the pop filter, integrated, removable, but really does not increase the profile of the mic at all. I tell you what, the this this microphone has been well thought out. I wish it wasn't discontinued. Because I think this is a I think it's a really nice, I think it's a really nice uh, microphone with a lot, a lot to speak of it. That's all I got. That's all I got. I mean, what, what, what more is to say? It's quiet. It's got a good user interface. It's low profile. It's super quiet. I mean, does that help? Does that help me make a decision? So if you're like, man, I got some money to spend, but I can't afford it. I don't want a Neumann TLM 102. I can't afford it. You, you might be able to find something like the Lewitt that's going to have a lot of the features. It's going to have some nice beginner features with that auto attenuation. On the on the auto attenuation, I will say that I was shouting into this thing when I was doing my testing, and I couldn't get it to attenuate. I don't think I can get my voice up to the level. I mean, I think it's for like if you're going to mic some super loud things, some instruments, you're blowing a trumpet into it, or you're you're putting it in front of a snare drum, maybe something like that, putting it over drum overheads or something like that. You might hit those really high sound pressure levels. My voice, I don't. Anyway. Does that help? I hope it does. I hope it's been interesting to hear this microphone to tell you what it's been super interesting for me to talk into it and to, to have the opportunity to use it and to, to share it with you guys. So maybe the Lewitt is the one for you. Maybe. I hope so. I hope it's the right one for somebody. I know it was for the for Randall who loaned it to me. So again, Randall, thanks so much. Um, that's it. That's all I have for you today. I hope that helps. Now, go out, get yourself a microphone, maybe one with a fancy user interface or something like that, but get yourself a microphone, find a place to record, and go out and record something amazing. Thanks. We'll talk to you next time.